exhibition can be a difficult situation for her to adapt to. You have to prepare her for what's coming up. The other day, Lily described something like she could see it. She said the voices told her. Why are you crying? Voices again. I lost my baby. Can I be your baby? Take me home with you! Excuse me. Yes. I was just wondering. Do you want a boy or a girl? No. What are you doing? She looks like a crazy person. I was just talking to... There's nobody there alone. I heard a... You and your baby are special. A lifeline that wasn't meant to exist. You have the power to choose the spirit that will be reborn in your baby. What happens if I don't choose? Then they will choose for you. You are not making any sense. I can hear them. They want to be our baby. I saw the evil that is coming. Val Valerie, Jeff in Vegas. Hi, Jeff in Vegas. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for joining me today. Talking about the voices. Yes. Thank you for having me here. You like my mortuary shirt? I thought I'd get in character. It's perfect. It's very, yeah. <laughs> I hope you wore it to Easter too. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let's talk about your film, The Voices. I hear you hear voices, but not like in a good Joan of Arc kind of way. I mean, who's to say good or evil? Sure that they... <laughs> They're undead children, but you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so creepy. And, and things really begin to get strange with your character, Lily, is pregnant. And most couples get to, you know, in this day and age can choose the sex of their child, but you get to choose the soul of the child. Tell me about that. Oh, isn't that fascinating? Such a clever idea. Um, basically, in the film, something happens during early childhood, a trauma, to connect Lily to the other side. And so when she and her husband conceive a child, all of these children from the other side are trying to come back from the dead and inhabit the soul of my baby. And if I don't choose by the baby's first heartbeat, then the other world will choose for me. And we get the feeling that that's no good at all, that only bad things will come with that. So it's kind of an upgrade. You Man, that's, that's a creepy premise, isn't it? it is. <laughs> that's a pitch. <laughs> and so uh, I think Lily finds out uh, this whole choosing the soul through a tarot reading, through a psychic. That's correct. And she's very skeptical at first. Have you ever had a tarot reading? I have actually. Have you? Yes, I have. Of course. Oh. I don't know if I believe it or not, but sometimes these psychics say things that I don't understand how they, how they know, you know? Right? Yeah. Sometimes it's total bunk and other times you're like, oh my. It's like, I know. And it's like, you know, and also astrology, you know, I don't believe any of that. But then when they tell you I'm a Virgo, then when they start saying things that are specific, I'm like, you know, and I look at other tarot readings, I look at other astro astrological signs, and they're not the same. You know, they're just saying something, you know, I'm looking for something they told about me and other signs, and, uh, and it's not there. So it's just a kind of ooga booga sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I believe in it a little bit. I realized all my exes had the same birth dates. And so I was like, there has to be something of that. It has to be those signs, right? Actually, yeah, I guess so. Uh, and your character, you know, for Lily, is her blindness a disadvantage? Um, I think that with a different spirit, it could have been, but I think that, um, the beautiful thing about this character is she's taken many disadvantages that she's been dealt in this life and she doesn't let them defeat her. She uses them to find her own strength and to find the good in every situation that she can. So I think what was meant to be a disadvantage, um, ends up being a surprising strength. And as an actress, did you have certain kind of techniques to portray someone who's who's blind? I mean, because, you know, not just to interpret yourself, but actually, you know, do something that would someone would kind of coach you and saying, no, someone would do this or. Yeah, so I was very lucky. I had about a month to prep for the role. So I watched documentaries on uh, people, what they experience when they're losing their sight. I actually did extensive research into because she loses her sight later in life, how those muscles develop um versus if you lose it early um got a walking cane practiced with it around my home 
But the most important thing that I did to prep for the roles, I actually have a friend who is blind, uh, my friend Bobby Holland, and he let me shadow him at his job. So I went into his job, he would walk me through basic things, and it was just invaluable. That one-on-one -on -one time with somebody who lives that experience every day taught me so, so much. And tell me about shooting in Mobile, Alabama. What was that like? It's beautiful. I've never been to Mobile. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous city. Like a little baby New Orleans. I loved it. Yeah, I'd love to go there someday. And was there a reason why the, the movie was shot there? Was it crucial to the story or? It wasn't. I think that they honestly wanted to shoot there just because the city itself is so gorgeous. And he was able to incorporate so much of that into his cinematography. Well, speaking of that, tell, tell, me about the, <laughs> yeah, tell me about the director's style. What's he like? Yes. Uh, he's got such style, man. He... Nathaniel Nguyen is the most prepared person I have ever worked with in my career so far. He had everything planned and tracked to a T. It was a delight to shoot with him because everything was intentional. It was very thoughtful. Uh, there was a strong sense of guidance the whole time. We never felt lost. And uh, for a lot of horror films, there's, you know, effects are added later, but there were some, were there practical effects in this? You know, I can think of a few. And can you yeah. tell me which one was the most challenging? Oh, Definitely the creature at the end, um, because that is a real person. That's actually the artist who created it wore the suit. Um, he's a graphic design artist, but also uh, my pregnant belly that happens during the dream sequence. Oh Let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was creepy. That was a lot of fun. They literally had to cut the bed out from underneath me. So I laid on a, on a bed frame for two hours with like my legs in the air while they just chainsawed so that we could, we could put that stomach in there. <laughs> It's so great to see practical effects in the CGI world because they're just such more effective and the makeup is such a lost art. It really gives an authenticity to the movie. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, this is a really ambitious horror film. Uh, is this a, a genre that you, that you enjoy as an actress? Absolutely. I love horror. I think horror movies are modern day morality tales. I mean, they all have these tropes and these stereotypical characters, but they're fun. And a really good one takes those stereotypes and kind of sucks us into a place of comfort with them and then flips the script. So you're entertained the whole time too. I just, I think it's a, a, a real art form to do horror correctly. Well, absolutely. Well, you were wonderful, Anna. Thank you so much for joining me today. And hey, come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. All right, perfect. I'll be there tomorrow. Okay, see you soon. Awesome. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Valerie. Take care.